Hi, welcome to another episode of We Reviewed It. It's a video series where we review items that we like and things that we actually use. Today, I have a showdown between two solar generators that I got from Costco. The Duracell Power Block 500 and this EcoFlow River Pro. Now, some of you might be thinking about this Duracell Power Block 500 and have even seen it in the warehouse. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of things to like about this unit, but it's not free of flaws. So guess what? I'm gonna be returning this to Costco. Let me tell you why. So I've had the Duracell Power Block 500 for the last couple of months. And originally I got it when I was photographing an event that had no on-site power. We needed to run a red carpet video light system. And I happened to see this unit at Costco the same week. And because it had a pure sine wave inverter, which by the way, is very important for photo equipment. It worked great for that event. Fast forward to Memorial Day weekend. We went camping for several days up in the National Forest. And this is something that I've been wanting to start doing for a while. So great. Another chance to use this unit and see what it could do. Honestly, it was wonderful having power on site in our tent for multiple days. And I think by the end of the trip, after about three days and two nights, the Duracell had about 30% left on the batteries. So not bad, but I did run into a few limitations that quickly became an issue. So the Duracell takes about seven to eight hours to fully charge off of your wall outlet. And it also has these fans that come on that are pretty loud. So that tells me that the inverter inside of it is not the greatest and it's generating a lot of excess of heat. The unit also auto shuts off. Now this is a problem that I ran into up at our campsite. And uh, they don't tell you how much that this happens. But for example, we have this airbed that's in the tent here. And it has a dual pump system that's supposed to keep the firmness where you set it. Well, not once did it actually turn on. That was also an issue when one night, a bunch of my stuff didn't get charged because it had shut off and I never noticed. And then my biggest gripe is that this 12 volt DC car cigarette lighter port <laughs> has a lot of issues. So it kept giving me overload error messages when running some very common devices. So I have this airbed pump that runs off of that. Well, it turned on for a second and then didn't want to work. I got to thinking about the limitations and wondering, are there better options out there that I, you know, would like better that don't have these issues? And that led me to looking at brands like Blue Eddy, Jackery, and finally EcoFlow, which happened to be available at Costco.com for a pretty good price during that time they were having a special EcoFlow event. So the thing that I really like about the EcoFlow brand is that they specialize in these types of products, battery solar generators versus Duracell, which yes, they make batteries, but they're a giant corporation who probably slaps their logo on a bunch of generic products that they license. So when it comes to the specs, let's take a look and compare these two and then do some real world testing. So to start off, both of these units use lithium ion batteries. Now that's a pretty standard battery in the industry and it's fairly stable. Unfortunately, neither of these units use the new LifePo 4 batteries, which have a much longer lifespan. Although there is a trade-off and they're about 20% heavier for the same amount of capacity. So the Duracell has 478 watt hours of capacity where the EcoFlow has 720 watt hours. So that's about 40% higher capacity on this EcoFlow. So if a device uses 100 watts, it would be using 100 watts in one hour. Using this calculation on the Duracell, that same device would use 4.7 hours to run the entire battery down. Whereas in the EcoFlow, you would get about 7.2 hours of runtime. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the lifespan of these batteries, because batteries are not something that lasts forever, EcoFlow rates theirs at about 800 full charge cycles. That's zero to 100%. After that, you're probably gonna see a reduction of about 80% capacity of the battery. So it's not gonna completely die, 
but you're not gonna get like how it was in the beginning. The Duracell, on the other hand, they don't list theirs, but it should be somewhere around that same thing because that's a very uh, battery chemistry dependent thing. On the Duracell, the charge from zero to 100% plugged into a wall takes about seven hours. That's pretty slow. On the other hand, the EcoFlow charges to 80% within 60 minutes and fully charge in about 1.6 hours. So around one hour and 40 minutes. Now that is a huge difference, especially when it matters, like there's a big storm coming in. When you plug these guys into the car, the Duracell takes about six hours to charge. The EcoFlow takes about eight hours. Now, if you give in the difference in battery capacities of 40%, that's still only a 28% difference in how much longer this takes to charge. So there's another win for the EcoFlow. It charges faster. Now, when it comes to solar charging with a perfect setup of 200 watts, the Duracell should take about four hours to charge. At least that's what they say. When it comes to the EcoFlow, they're a little more conservative with their estimates. Now, depending on your panel setup and how much sun you can utilize, it can take anywhere from four to 12 hours of sunlight to charge these things to 100%. But that is from 0%. And you're probably not gonna run it all the way down in one night. So if you're out camping and you set up your solar panels, you're probably gonna be able to mostly get it charged by the amount of sun that you're able to get hitting the panel. The less amount of charging bricks and cables that I need to bring, eh, the more convenient that is for me. So built into each of these is a series of USB connectors. Now they're fairly comparable to each other. Both feature 2.4 amp USB ports. These give about 12 watts of power each. Both also feature USB-C PD ports, which are these guys. On the Duracell, they only give you 60 watts total, whereas the EcoFlow gives you 100 watts. Now, that really isn't that much of a difference, especially in practical use, but, some devices that use a lot of power, like say one of the new 16 inch MacBook Pros, well, those come with a 95 watt charger. So when it comes to the 12 volt DC outputs, you know, the cigarette lighter ports, well, that's where this EcoFlow shines. Now I believe the 12 volt ports on this Duracell are flawed. Now they give a range in their specs of nine volts to 12.6 volts at 10 amps. But when we were camping, it was not able to run this airbed pump that I have which is rated about six amps, give or take. It kept giving me an overload error and I tried it on the EcoFlow, it works perfectly fine. The EcoFlow does say 10 amps at 13.6 volts inside of their specs. So that's probably the main reason that this Duracell is going back to Costco. And you know, thankfully with Costco's amazing return policy, well, that makes it really easy. Now I should add that EcoFlow also includes DC outputs with the DC 5521 plugs. That's these guys down here. They can go straight into 12 volt DC appliances and electronics. However, they're only rated at about three amps between the two total. So last but not least, when it comes to size and weight, that's where the Duracell actually has the upper hand. It's only 10.6 pounds. It's really light easy to take with you, carry around, travel with. Whereas the EcoFlow is six pounds heavier at 16.8 pounds and it definitely has some heft to it. But when it comes to the build quality, the Duracell has a lot to be desired. Feels kind of cheap, slightly hollow too. Where the EcoFlow, it's solid. I think the EcoFlow has the upper hand on the build quality, but carrying this guy around, not as nice as carrying this one. So another thing that I noticed that was different between these two that is a pretty important thing to me is the accessories that it comes with in the box. Now, the EcoFlow gives you this power charging cable, but they also give you a solar charging cable to run into MC4 solar. They give you a car charging cable so you can charge the unit from the cigarette lighter port in your car. And they give you this DC to DC cable, which can power some electronics. Although you might need a different one for <laughs> some specific stuff. So what does the Duracell PowerBlock 500 come with? Well, it comes with this AC wall charging cable and that's it. 
Now, of course, specs are only one part of it, but we need to find out what these guys can really do. So let's do some real world testing. I got the PowerBlock 500 to set up that red carpet event where I was running these lights right here. Now these are 100 watt lights. Let's go ahead and put this on and see what kind of power we get. Now this is at 100% and we are pulling in three hours and 50 minutes of battery capacity here. So divide these by half. So you got two of them and you end up with about two hours of battery life at 100%. Now, of course, for that event, I was not running at 100%. I was running more at 35 to 50%. So at 35, we are getting about eight hours and 10 minutes of battery life. In. So not bad, divide that in half. We're still at four hours of battery. So when it comes to the EcoFlow, let's try the same test and see how it does. Here's the video light. This is at 100%. We are able to get seven hours of battery life. And on comparison to the Duracell, that's quite impressive. It was able to do four hours and 45 minutes. This is doing at least seven hours. Now, if we drop it down to 35%, we are able to get over 20 hours of battery life out of this unit with this light. And you divide that by two or three and you're still working with seven to 10 hours of battery life at 35%. So that's pretty impressive. That's almost an entire day of gorilla shooting. So remember this airbed pump that gave me all that trouble up at the campsite? Well, let's try it in the EcoFlow and see how well it works. It works. Since this is one of the biggest issues I have with the Duracell, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and show you an example of what it does when this happens. E07, an output overload error. Sometimes you can get it to turn on, but most of the time it won't even go at all. And when it does turn on, it doesn't stay on. It ends up erroring out. So let's do another test that I think is a pretty practical one. And that's using this tire inflator. You know, the kind that goes inside of your car, you plug into the cigarette ladder port and see if the Duracell or the EcoFlow can run it. So actually my tire does need to be inflated a little bit. It's been running a little bit low. So let's try out the EcoFlow here and see how well it does. Turns on. Look at that, it's working. So let's try out the Duracell and see if it can even handle this inflator. After the airbed pump thing, I'm not really very hopeful of it. All right, well, it turns on, it gets power. Let's try turning on the actual inflation. Nope, nothing. It's getting such low voltage that it's not even trying to turn on the compressor at all. So that's a fail. So both of these units have the ability to run 600 watts of continuous output power. EcoFlow has done this unique proprietary thing called XBoost. And basically it's a, a mathematical thing they've done in the software where they've dropped the voltage down to allow it to run a higher power output continuously. Now this won't work on everything and you can actually damage some equipment doing that. So I want to see if this would work. In a cinch, if I wanted to cut up some wood at a campsite or, or say you're an overland camper and you're driving on these old forest roads, oftentimes the trees fall down across the road and you've got to be able to cut them and get them out of your way. Now, honestly, I mean, you probably should use a you know lithium battery chainsaw, but in a cinch, would this work? Well, let's find out. Darn it. Well, the chainsaw was a fail, but let's try this leaf blower. Now this thing puts out 12 amps, so it should be somewhere around 1200 watts or so at maximum output. So that is speed one. So speed one definitely works. Let's try speed two. That's gonna be using more voltage. Okay, so you could hear it kick on for a little bit there, but it drops it down pretty quickly. Honestly, this is probably not something that, you know, 
I would want to do on a normal basis, pushing the limits of the EcoFlow. Because let's face it, electronics, they are sensitive. Even though they can do it, doesn't mean that you should do it. So overall, I think this solar generator is really going to fit my needs. There are some things that I really like about it. And one of them is the ability to log into the actual unit over Wi-Fi and customize and view all kinds of settings. Now, this thing is super customizable. For example, if you know anything about recharging batteries, the faster you charge them generally isn't healthy for the battery. It's going to affect the overall lifespan and the amount of charge levels that you can get in it. So as awesome as the one hour quick charging is, you can turn it off in the app. And that setting also doesn't need the fans running, so it becomes whisper quiet. Now, like the Duracell, this unit also has an auto shutoff, but guess what? You can change the time in the app in increments from 30 minutes to 12 hours or set it to never go off. And that's pretty awesome. Now, I know some hardcore preppers on YouTube are upset about the Wi-Fi and hacking and you know, let's be honest, for the majority of us, it's not that big of a deal. And if you're really worried, just don't set it up. You don't have to put it on your network. If you keep it in the reset mode, you can still log in over its own Wi-Fi. You just select the EcoFlow Wi-Fi on your phone at the same time as you run the app and it still works. And that's actually something that I was worried about with taking it camping. Did I need to get all the settings set up ahead of time? or was I gonna be able to change stuff while I was there? Now we're gonna have to see how this EcoFlow does as we start using it more. Now I certainly haven't had it long enough to really see its limitations or, or give a full review, but we do have several camping trips planned and I'm definitely going to be testing it out wherever I can. I already have in some of our recent vlogs. Now we're primarily a family vlog channel where me and my two daughters go on adventures and cover some of our daily lives, our pets, which we call the zoo, and some of the other things that we get up to. But if you like this type of content, let me know by liking and commenting below. So what do you guys think of these EcoFlow products? Did I get anything wrong here? All right, have a great one guys, and we'll be seeing you on the next one.